It's Project Vandemic. We're gonna see if we can get this thing on the road by the time all this craziness is over with. Some shifter bushings need replacement, but before we dive into that, let's take a look at how the shifter is working right now. I remember being able to find gears, but there's one weird thing about it. That's this. So we're going first, second, third, fourth, reverse. It does all of that. But if I go all the way over, I can't go up. I have to come back a little bit to go up. So I think it needs some adjustment. Let's see if we can figure that out and then we'll take it all apart to get cleaned up and put new bushings in. Still doesn't feel right. Let's take it apart and see if we can figure out why. Ooh, what a mess. When we put it all together, we'll try a new one of these. Okay, right, we'll clean these parts up. It's a mess. <laughs> I've got another, I got a new one of these. So we'll try a new one. This one's a little bit boogered. I don't know that that would cause what we were seeing. We wanna renew the bushings anyway, maybe that's contributing to this. So, okay, inconclusive. <laughs> Under the bus just behind the front wheels. I'm gonna take this guy off, this little coupler that joins the front section of the shift rod to the middle rear section. I'm gonna take this one out. This one, you have to remove the transmission to pull it out. I'm gonna try to do this without that. I hope I don't have to do that to accomplish what I need to today because that's a whole nother can of worms that I really don't want to get into right now. Let's just get this guy apart and see if we can do our business with uh, those bushings and get a better understanding of any additional parts we'll need. This is safety wire here. So I'm gonna snip that. Put some stainless steel stuff back in there when we put it together. Eight millimeter here. It's probably got a kind of a dog point on it and goes into a a detent. Okay. So this guy has to go backwards to get this guy out. Let's go back there and take a look. Same deal back here with the safety wire. Well, look at that. That was loose. That'll put some slop in things. That would have added a significant amount of slop. shifted into something. Ta-da! To get this out, I had to loosen those two guys. This one was already loose, which might explain some things for us. And to make room to drop this out between the shift rod and the hockey stick on the transaxle, I shifted that way. I guess that's probably one of the forward gears if we think about the pivot point and something and stuff. But I mean like first or, or third, but whatever. I'm in a gear and that gave me room to get this thing out. So I'll clean this up, take a good look at it. I think it's probably all right. And now I can pull this back enough to get the front shift rod out. Woo! All right. Ta-da! Okay. So here's a weird bushing. This was on the later buses, but they did it this way instead of supporting it back here. It's supposed to be better in some way. All right, 
that will clean this up. This is in good shape. That's nice to see. I want one of these in the rear too. Hang on to this guy. So these are kind of weird. This I believe is supposed to go that way. It's got a little pin in there. It goes into that hole. Here's the thing. <laughs> I would really like to fix this. <laughs> As it stands, without removing the transaxle, I can't remove the shift rod, which means I can't replace the rear bushing, which means it's half done. And I may have to settle for that. But when I pull this rod all the way forward, this guy right here, it comes all the way up to here and then has trouble. Now if I pull down on it, it flexes a bit, but it's pushing against the top of the swing lever. It looks like if I removed that, I may be able to pull it down this way, underneath this portion, like bend it over some, and get it to come out this way. Then it would be bending from further back, and there, the flex would be distributed over a longer portion of the rod. So this may be a waste of time, but I'm gonna see if I can pull this off and move it out of the way and see if I can get the shift rod out. That would be a whole lot easier than removing the transaxle. So let's try it. I'm sure this has been tried before, so somebody out there knows exactly how this is gonna end up. So hold your laughter, please. We're experimentating. This seems like the kind of thing where the bolt has to be all the way out for it to slip off of its shaft. Okay, let's see if we can slip this thing off. Ooh, that looks good. That did for a second. Hey, there we go. So that's the swing lever. I just greased this thing. Okay. I think that might be far enough. Let's see. a good feeling about this folks. With that long shift rod out of its tube, I'm gonna go ahead and spend a little bit of time on the shifter, because I'd like to end up with nice, crisp, smooth shifting that we don't have to hunt around for. It seems like that's really common on VWs for you know, reasons of bushings being messed up or transaxle mounts not being right or whatever. So there's some of these things that if I have that problem, then they'll have to wait. But uh, I'm gonna do what I can I'll be ordering the bushing kit. I, I had some spare bushings laying around, but I didn't have this one. And I want to clean the tube that that long shift rod went into. I'm pretty sure it's rusty from looking at the, the bushings. You can kind of see it there. This little ridge close to the bottom is pretty worn down. And this one is really worn down, right? That's the ridge. And here's the part that's scraping up against that rust. I wanna see what I can do to smooth that out. There's this trick where you take an old clutch cable, which I don't, I can't find one, but I do have a cable that's very similar to an old clutch cable. Chuck it into a drill, like so, and rotate it around inside there. We'll play with that a little bit, see if we can clean out the inside of that tube and then rinse it out really well with, by passing a rag through it soaked in kerosene and then lube it really well, see where we are. Hopefully we're gonna do some, some effective shift rod 
refurb tonight. take some time and really get to know how something's put together. It tells you a little bit more about what the designers were thinking and how to properly reassemble it and all that. Instead of just trying to mimic what you saw when you took it apart, which is a good start, understanding really how it all goes together is kind of a nice thing. In this case, I wouldn't have thought this, but this little coupler dealie is not a coupler at all. It's really just a collar that holds the threads for this grub screw. And this shift rod goes inside this tube. Cool to see the details of how something is, is put together. This is the little hole here that the pin inside that bushing goes into. And from what I've seen, both bushings, there's one here and then there's one in the very back of this shift rod face that way. It's kind of like a shuttlecock, right? Like for uh, badminton. So the skirt goes backwards and then way back here, the other bushing uh, here. Not all the way back, <laughs> but here is the other bushing. So I'm going to wire this, wire brush this off just a little bit. Not that anything slides on this. In fact, that pin is what keeps this stuff together and it moves together inside the shift tube. That's why I think it's so important that I get the shift tube itself that's, you know, permanently installed in the vehicle as clean as possible so that this will last as long as possible. That's going to be kind of a chore. <laughs> start out working on the shift tube in the vehicle with a little bit of degreasing. I have this long quarter inch threaded rod here. It's probably about six feet. And I'm going to put a washer on the end of it to kind of act as a ram so I can push a rag, a kerosene soaked rag, through the length of the tube probably multiple times. <laughs> but I'm going to try this. I don't know. I've got my doubts about this. I don't think it's going to completely clean it by any means. No one's made such a claim, to be fair. Ow. But um, we'll see. We'll see how well it does. And then we got that endoscope thing. You can take a look inside. <laughs> That'll be fun. Let's get a look at the inside of it with the endoscope. Hopefully we're amazed. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> I've got this rod threaded through the chassis about the way that the shift rod came out. And I'm hoping to push it in like that. We'll get a little bit of kerosene in there. Okay, probably would have been smart to put something down there to catch all that. So that's some filth. Looks like it's more on the bottom than the top. Let's do that a couple more times and monitor what these look like when they come out the other end. And I'm going to get an oil pan, <laughs> having learned from experience. The ram idea seems to be working okay.
pretty filthy. So it's pretty amazing how much gunk is coming out of that. Um, they <laughs> still haven't gotten a clean one through. But I do feel like I've probably got it pretty soaked with kerosene by now. So I'm gonna try the cable thing. I, I really don't know how this is gonna go. So I'm just gonna put the full length of cable that I have in there and then pull it back out. So far it's hard to imagine what good this is doing. Well, I didn't get the feeling that that did any good. I'm gonna try this again and then I've got another idea that I'd like to try out. I got an idea. Ta-da! This is a pot scrubber, right? Some people call them a chore boy pot scrubber, one of these little copper dealies. I can keep with my little ramrod idea here. So what we end up with. So let's try this. Provided I didn't just get that thing stuck in there. <laughs> I already have a better feeling about this. Let's see if we can push it through. Okay, this is more comforting. Got an idea. So I'm gonna cut little slots in this washer here. It'll grab into the pot scrubber and I'll chuck the other end of this in the drill, rotate it as I push it down the tube. Maybe we'll make quicker progress that way. Let's go put this in there and chuck it in the drill. See what happens. Well, I've gone as far as I can with the drill. Ooh. Actually, I can I can feel this pot scrubber on the thing as I pull it back, so I'm just gonna make another pass. Nice. I think I might run some paper towels through, see how much gunk comes out. Decent amount of crud. Let's send it through again. I'm gonna do this approach one more time and then see if we can rig up some kind of a rinse cycle. <laughs> it's starting to get kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is run the kerosene soaked rags through a few more times to make sure that I get all of the grease out that I can. And then I'm going to plug the ends of the tube with these fittings. Now the inside diameter of that tube is about one and an eighth of an inch, which is about the outside diameter of these half inch PVC fittings. So I'll be able to snugly shove this in in the front. Okay, that's pretty snug. That'll give me a place to pour water down into the tube. And then I'll plug the end of the tube with this elbow. I can't believe I had this laying around, but it's a slip fitting on this leg of the elbow and a threaded fitting on this end. Any way to plug it, right? It doesn't have to be watertight. Like it's gonna leak a little. That's all right. I just want it to fill up and then I can pull this plug and let it all drain out into a drip pan. We'll use this bucket and then fill it again and drain it. So let's do that. So first the kerosene soaked paper towels push through with the plunger dilly do, and then we'll rinse it out like this. This thing, I pieced together <laughs> several years ago when I um, painted the RV to help out with the wet sanding. So it's just a little nozzle here that's made out of uh, irrigation parts and some fittings and stuff. But that, that's how I'll get the water. It's kind of bendy, right? So that's how I'll get the water hose in a controlled manner. 
up into this fitting here. Here goes nothing. Getting a little drip down at the other end. There you go, there's a rent cycle. That water looks pretty clear, really. I'm not convinced this is doing much good for the effort that it's taking, so let's just send it. I'm going to put a flow of water through, leave this end open. I'll just put as much water into it as I can uh, and just capture it in this bucket. And then I'll have to stop before the bucket's full. Well, honestly, that was kind of fun. <laughs> I think the drill now is to get it dry, dry, dry before lubing it up. So there's no moisture in there. I don't want to trap the moisture in there with the seals on the end, right? So I'm going to send some paper towels down through there and then a bunch of compressed air and then let it air out overnight and we'll lube it up tomorrow. I have to say that looks pretty good. Well, that was a good way to eat up an evening. <laughs> All I got done was cleaning the shift rod tube. But that's all right. I'm happy with the way that it went. Uh, need to do some other guide tubes, like for the accelerator and the clutch cable, I think. Maybe I'll also do the e-brake cables. That's kind of been the plan. So I've got some smaller tubes that I want to clean out, and maybe we'll come up with a way to do that. I think it's possible that that's where the cable trick really shines, is on the smaller tubes. So I'm going to try this again in that situation. I really didn't feel like this did any good on the big tube. I like the pot scrubber idea a whole lot better there. Uh, this I won't be able to fit down into the small tube, so we will have to change our approach. <laughs> Till then, I think I'm going to call it a night. Thanks for watching, y'all.